So here's the question. Which substance have a, has a higher boiling point, I2 or F2? To do this problem, you have to consider I2 is a nonpolar substance. And here's another I2, a nonpolar substance. And to make it boil, you have to break the intramolecular force between them. And can you tell me what the intramolecular force is? Okay, well, it is a nonpolar and a nonpolar substances, substance. So the only possible um, IMF would be a dispersion force. So this is definitely a dispersion force. Okay, so you're trying to break that and you're trying to break F2. Now F2, if you look at the periodic table, F is a lot smaller than I. So it has less electrons. Okay, so here are the electrons floating around inside the F, F2. And you're trying to break this force. Again, it's nonpolar, nonpolar, it's also dispersion. So the idea here is which dispersion force is stronger. Okay, so let's look here. In order for you to cause a dispersion force, you must move the electrons temporarily to one side making this side temporarily partially negative, temporarily partially positive. Then these electrons on this I2 will be repelled to move to the opposite side, making this temporarily negative and this temporarily positive. Because of those temporary dipoles, you now have a dispersion force and it turns into liquid. This one, it has less electrons. So this partial negative is going to be a lot smaller in value than this, than this partial negative. This is a bigger partial negative, let's say a negative 0.9, while this is a negative 0.7. I'm just making up those numbers, okay? It's just not as negative. Let's forget that. Not as negative as this is negative, okay? Therefore, this dispersion force will be weaker. And the reason it's weaker is because you just have less electrons, okay? Weaker because you have less electrons, and if you have less electrons, it is not as polarizable. Not as polarizable. Now, you might think, what does polarizable mean? Polarizable is the ability to move electrons or distort an electron cloud. Because it's smaller, the nucleus, it's closer to the negative electrons. The positive protons closer to the negative electrons is holding onto them tighter. You have less of them, so they won't move as much. They are not as polarizable. They are not as movable. You can think of it that way. So the question is, which substance has a higher boiling point, I2 or F2? I would think it would be I2. And you would say, and when I say why, go ahead and answer, why do you think that is? The reason is it has more electrons. I would say the following down here, since I2 has more electrons, it is more polarizable <coughs> or movable. <coughs> the dispersion force will be stronger <coughs> and you have to heat it up more to make it boil so the boiling point will be higher. Okay, so now you can see that the strength of the dispersion force can tell you properties of the substance. Will it boil? Will it not boil? Will it be a liquid at this temperature? Will it be a solid or a gas at this temperature? And in fact, fluorine is a gas because at, at this temperature, at room temperature, because the bond is so weak between them. Whereas I2 is a solid because the bond between them is so strong. Okay, here's another thing you can look at. Which substance has a higher boiling point? This is pentane. The N means it's long and there are no branches, okay? So it's just a long chain, it looks like this. Which substance has a higher boiling point? 
N-pentane or neopentane. This one is branched. Now let's compare them. First, you have CH, 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 CH. Similar in electronegativity, this is very nonpolar. This is another N-pentane, it's also nonpolar. What is the, the force between two nonpolar substances? That's correct, it's dispersion. Okay, now let's look over here. This also has carbon hydrogen, which are similar in electronegativity, so it's also nonpolar, nonpolar, nonpolar. By the way, this circle is the same as this substance here, they just didn't draw two. What is the force between two nonpolar substances? You're right, it's also dispersion. Okay, so all you have to know now is to figure out which is stronger. So here's a dispersion force. It says, which substance has a higher boiling point? Which one's stronger, this dispersion force or this dispersion force? And so you might think, which one has more electrons? Well, if you look, they have the same, exactly the same number of carbons, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and same number of H's. So they have the same number of electrons. So they have the same polarizability, right? Because they have the same number of electrons. So what's different? The difference is the point of contact. There is more contact when it's flat than when it is branched or spherical. If there is more contact, then the force between them is stronger. If the force between them is stronger, the boiling point will be higher because it'll take more to break it because it's stronger. As you can see here, the boiling point is 36. Here, the boiling point is 9.5. Okay? So, what physical properties are affected by intermolecular forces? You've already seen vo boiling point. Volatility is when you have something liquid and you're trying to turn it into a gas. If the force between the liquid molecules are weak, it's going to be very volatile. Okay. Surface tension. Water, when it rains, it forms this little droplet because the hydrogen bonding, the vector forces, are all pointing inwards. And it's very strong. So you have a strong surface on the outside. Okay. Surface tension is a tendency of a fluid surface to acquire at the least surface area. Okay, Because the hydrogen bonding is so strong, it has a high surface tension, as opposed to something like another substance. Like if you had N-pentane and it's a liquid, it'll be like a big blob because they don't want to stick together because of a weak dispersion force. Melting point, the same thing. If these two are both solids, which one will melt first? Of course, the F2 will melt first because the force between them is strong, is weaker. So that will melt first. Viscosity, you can think of it as the thickness of a, of a liquid. So if it's really thick, that means they want to stick together because the IMF is very strong. Okay? So here's, would, this would be a, a, a possible test question. Which force, what type of force is present in these substances? You have one, two, three, four. In H2O, what is the, the IMF between H2O? So you're going to think, oh, this is polar. This is also polar. Is it dipole-dipole? Oh, wait, H is attached to O. When H is attached to O or F, or N, this H can hydrogen bond. This H can hydrogen bond. This H can hydrogen bond. So this H can hydrogen bond. This H can hydrogen bond. So the predominant force in water is hydrogen bonding. Okay? Here, this one. What's the predominant force here? Ooh, that looks polar. That also looks polar. But it can hydrogen bond, so that the predominant force is dipole-dipole. Okay, let's look at carbon dioxide. 
This one is nonpolar. This one is nonpolar. What's the force between two nonpolar substances? The predominant force is dispersion. Okay? Should have written it there. Now, does water have dispersion force? Yes, it does. It's just not predominant. Predominantly hydrogen bonding. Same with H2S. Now, when I tell you which one, which, which bond is the strongest in the top three? The top three, this hydrogen bonding will be the strongest. And dispersion would be the weakest. And this would be in the middle. Okay? Now, does that mean dispersion force is weak? Not necessarily. Dispersion force could be very strong. Okay? If the molecule is huge. Okay? Let's think, think about oil. Okay? This is made of carbon and hydrogen. Similar electronegativity, nonpolar, nonpolar. The force between them is dispersion. Okay, so when you try to get a pan and fill it up with water, the water boils, right? This is a pan. <laughs> you take a pan and you fill it up with oil, the oil is not boiling, it's staying, which means this dispersion force is stronger than this hydrogen bonding, right? Because this, the oil's not gonna boil away. The reason this dispersion force is strong because oil is a lot bigger molecule than water is. So now you're like confused. How do you know which is stronger? Okay, this is what you do. You have to compare the same size molecule. This one has three atoms, three atoms, three atoms, three atoms. If they're all the same size, Hydrogen bonding is the strongest. Dispersion is the weakest, okay? But if it's a huge molecule, then you can't really compare them with your knowledge. You have to compare a huge nonpolar with a small nonpolar. So in this case, the huge nonpolar will be, will have a higher boiling point than a smaller nonpolar substance, okay?